Hello everybody, back on to a uh, third episode, can't believe it. I'm trying to publish an episode every week um, and keep on top of it. This one I'm going to try and keep shorter, so I'm going to get straight on with it. I'm looking at um, general fitness and health, which is something that actually really triggered this channel. Um, and um, I'm going to cover uh, the things I've done that have worked, a few things I've done that haven't worked. And also at the end, my number one tip, and it's the thing that's really made a difference, um, and I'll cover that. Really what happens with the health and fitness, I found, was that it's a game of lots of small improvements. If you get a 5-10% improvement in all these areas, it adds up to a very big improvement. So let's go through them, and you can see if any of these will work for you too. So why did I start on this? Well, everyone said 60, your health takes a big downturn. I laughed, I've been in good health, never had a health problem, didn't even know who my doctor was most of the time. Um, but sure enough, 60, 61, I started having issues. Um, and of course, COVID came along. I think COVID, and I think quite a lot of the issues I've had are related to COVID. And um, it could be, could be age 61, or it could be COVID, or it could be both, of course. Um, I'm a private pilot. I went for my medical last year. I scraped through it. I really didn't enjoy scraping. I don't like scraping through any sort of uh, test or uh, medical or anything like that. Um, my weight limit was bordering on obese. I, he said he thought he could hear a, a, an echo on one of my heart valves. And if that's really the case, then uh, then that's the end of my pilot's license. Um, and my blood pressure was a bit high um, and the like. So that sort of scared me into doing something. I um, also had a few issues last year, which on over the last year, which um, made me think that perhaps I had some food allergies or I'm a very allergic person. I'm allergic to lots of things, um, mainly uh, horses and dogs, but dust, um, a bit hay fevery, that sort of person. Um, and I thought I had some some reactions to food. Um, and um, I started feeling joint pains and, and aches and pains. And, you know, you know, you're old when you get up and you go, oh, you know, and, and that was happening to me. And I thought that's that means I've got to lose some weight. It was pretty obvious, really. I was overweight. And uh, I figured, actually, it can't do me any harm. Getting a bit fitter can only work, really. So here's the things I did. I'll go through each one and uh, it, it, it adds up to quite a big difference. I'll start with diet, as in what you eat, not losing weight. We'll come on to that. Um, diet seemed to be an important one for me. I was eating a lot of crap, pot noodles, that sort of shit. Um, and one of the things that uh, I seemed to be getting a reaction to was MSG, monosodium glutamate. And I was shocked to see how many things have got MSG in them. Um, it's like a salt, but it increases the savoury flavour in things. A Chinese famous for putting lots in. Um, but lots of these, um, lots of these, for lack of a better term, crap meals, pot noodles, crap like that, had them in. Um, lots of e-numbers. So I went on a bit of a mission and I had two weeks of eating pretty much nothing but fruit, veg and drinking water. Oh my God, what a difference that made. I lost half a stone in two weeks, um, but I also felt so much better. And then what I did was I slowly started reintroducing things and seeing what happened. Um, the main one was MSG, that that I've cut out completely. I'll never go back to that now. In fact, I go through food labels. Uh, that makes me old when I go through food labels. But I go through the food labels. Uh, anything with MSG, it's back on the shelf. Anything with too many e-numbers, back on the shelf. And in fact, I've cut out lots of ready, ready meal type things. Along with MSG, I cut my salt right down. That was to help my blood pressure, really. But again, helped me a huge amount in lots of ways. Um, it's difficult to stay hydrated when you've got a lot of salt, um, but the blood pressure was the key thing, hardening of arteries and things. So I cut my salt right down. In fact, I add no salt to meals now. It took me about a month to get used to no salt, but it worked. Um, I did the same with sugar. So I was drinking a lot of sugary drinks, lots of colas, lots of uh, orange drinks with when you look at them, you know, well, you spill one and find your hand sticks to the table where the sugar is, you know. And so I cut all those out. I cut out anything with too much sugar, lots of artificial sugars um, and the like. Um, 
but the main one was I went through the supermarket I cut out ready meals that had e numbers MSG lots of salt lots of sugar and I went back to basics basic meals um, chicken and vegetables and fruit and um, I didn't go vegetarian I've never been vegetarian um, I like my chicken I like my meat um, but you know it's just back to basics simple straightforward cooking when I'd cut the salt out I noticed that I started to notice the flavor of the food and not the salt it was painful to start with everything tasted so bland but after a few weeks um, I got used to no salt and I suspect if I put the amount of salt on now that I used to, I think it was disgusting. So I've cut all those out. Um, and I've also gone on to daily smoothies. Pop a quick video in here about the smoothies. Um, I bought a Nutribullet ages ago. Didn't you? One of those things you buy, put in the cupboard, it doesn't come out again. Um, I dusted that off um, and I was buying um, frozen uh, fruit from the supermarket, um, which keeps it as a smoothie leave it in the freezer i'd get bananas uh, frozen peach frozen berries frozen what else do i have pineapple and some fruit juices fresh fruit juices again nothing in them none of these things that have been tampered with just apple juice or whatever pineapple juice or whatever um, and in just a few minutes you can make a smoothie drink which probably adds up to most of your required five a day in one drink uh, and i enjoyed them and they were good and so changing the what i ate definitely made a big difference and those things that i thought were food allergies actually were a response to lots of crap food and i started to feel significantly better and and lost a huge amount of weight it's part of my weight loss was um the diet as in what I eat, not how much I eat. Right, here we go. A smoothie in just a few minutes, probably less than it takes to make a cup of coffee. So I've got the Nutribullet. I like it. It's good. It does the job. I tend to buy lots of frozen fruit. You've obviously got fresh fruit as well. I buy frozen fruit. I also sometimes buy a big box of, say, things like blueberries and just put them in a bag. Give them a good shake as they're freezing so they don't all uh, freeze together. I also cut up banana. I like banana, but I found in a smoothie it makes it go very thick after sort of 10 minutes. If you haven't drunk it straight away, it, it, it sort of goes a bit gloopy. So here we go. We've got an apple. I core it. I leave quite, part, quite a bit of the core in. I can't remember who it was. One of the comedians said that all the health he eats the whole apple including the core because all the healthy bits are in the core i don't know how true that is but my blender will soon mash that up so i chuck the whole lot in i'll have some banana because i'm going to drink this one straight away a bit of banana it's got plenty of potassium in i i also put a lot of blueberries in blueberries are meant to be one of the healthiest foods I hate washing up after them though. It's like you spilt black ink or blue ink in your sink. Um, I've got some uh, peach. Oh no, there's mango, this one. A bit of mango. Because this is all frozen, it's going to make it a cold smoothie. You could put ice in as well. If you like them a bit more liquid, a bit more, um, uh, what's the word, watery, you can put ice in and still have them nice and cold. Here I've got some orange juice. It's going to be a fairly orangey one, this one. Stick the lid on. I've taken off all the stickers that says, don't stick your fingers in the spinning blades. You'd think that was obvious, wouldn't you? Chuck it in and hit the button. This is going to deafen my microphone. I found when you've got lots of ice in there, it sort of gets a bit clumpy at the bottom. And, and you find it spinning like hell here and all the fruit's still up the top. So every now and then I take it off and give it a shake. That's about it. That's as long as it really takes. Got a glass here. Looks, it looks suspiciously like that's been stolen from a pub. And that is pure fruit, pure natural, nothing added, and it tastes bloody good. Cheers.
by the way, I'll probably do a whole episode on coffee, but this, this is just gorgeous. It's a Bialetti coffee machine, coffee maker. It makes one of the best cups of coffee you'll ever get. We'll come on to that another time. The next thing I'll cover is weight loss, diet as in dieting weight loss. Um, there was a number of things that worked for me and they worked beautifully. And in fact, it got really easy. I, I, people are going to hate me for this, but I could lose a stone just like that. Um, and I did it with several things, upping my mobility. I'll come on to that with general fitness, lots of walking, lots of movement, lots of lifting, lots of action, lots of activity, not sitting on the sofa watching telly or playing a video game or whatever. Get up and do something. That's the best tip you can have for losing weight. The other thing I had was to stop eating late in the evening. I'm a, I was a terror for what I used to call bed picnics. You know, I'd go to bed with a, a nice big drink of something or even a cider, which is just full of sugar and full of full of uh, weight um, and a big chunk of cheese or some chocolate or, you know, a snack. Um, cut that out. And I found that if I stop eating, say, six o'clock in the evening and I don't eat until the next morning, that's effectively a fasting period. Oh, my God, I could lose two pounds a day doing that. It just falls off. Um, so that was another trick was to just set a timer on my phone. I'm into my fasting period now. And it was painful to start with, you know, kind of walk past the fridge and think, oh, a oh, bit of cheese, bit of cheese, bit of cheese. And you have to stop yourself and stand on the scales the next morning. And you've lost another pound or two and you think, God, that's so worth it. Um, so fasting has worked for me a treat. And it's not even painful. I just have to stop eating by a certain point. Six o'clock in the evening is my one. That gives me typically 12 to 14 hours fasting. Um, obviously you drink water during that time you don't go without anything um, and the other trick I learned was when you're walking around the supermarket just don't buy that stuff if it's not in the fridge if it's not there in the cupboard you can't eat it it's not there so you're not tempted so that was another good trick and and really those those things have worked perfectly for me For general fitness, as I said previously, upping your activity. That's the key. Keep moving. Don't sit down uh, or don't spend as long sitting down. Obviously, you've got to sit down, but um, keep that movement. Keep active. Um, I do a lot of walking. Walking's fantastic. If you've got a dog, your dog will love you for it too. We've got a lovely long walk, especially while the weather's nice in the summer. It's easy. It's light for long hours. Long after you finish work, you can have your dinner early. As I've said previously, finish your dinner and go for a lovely long walk with your dog. Um, and, and I found that's just been great for me. Um, it, it, the, the weight comes off so fast. I also enjoy swimming. Another great exercise if you're trying to lose some weight and, and it's not heavy impact on any of your joints. They reckon swimming is a really fantastic one. I enjoy swimming. So um, a bit of swimming. I've got my kayaking. I've got a lot of other activities. So I've just upped them all. And again, you know, like I say in the beginning, if you if you can up everything 10 percent, the actual the sum total of all those 10% is huge. I also do some um, bedtime exercises. I've started doing the sort of planks, the stretches, the um, press-ups or push-ups, um, sit-ups. Uh, I don't do a huge amount of them. And I've found actually they help me sleep as well. We'll come on to sleep in the next bit. But I found that a little bit of exercise, it sort of triggers in my brain. This is bedtime now. Um, and, and you've done your exercise as well. And then anything else you can do on top of that. My beekeeping, for example, in the summer, I'm lifting great big heavy supers of honey on and off bee, beehives and moving them around and putting them into storage and extracting them. Um, I do a lot more kayaking in the summer, of course. Winter is a difficult one. So while we're in the summer, now the time to hit it hard um, but the more activity you can get in the better you'll be it's just a game of keep moving and um, and when you think oh I just can't be bothered 
go do it and when you think oh, i've done a bit now and do a bit more just keep pushing yourself or find somebody to walk with who, who walks faster than you or walks further than you just to push yourself along and actually if you're on a walk having a chat with somebody actually makes it a lot better as well i mean sometimes i like to just walk along put the headphones in listen to my music and and i don't want anyone else i'm just quite happy with on my own but it's also quite nice to to walk with a friend and chat by the way, I'm, I'm hoping to have a, an episode coming up with a mate of mine who has offered that he'd like to do um, two grumpy old men walking the dogs and talking bollocks. I think that would be quite a lot of fun because he's got a wicked sense of humour. Um, I'm hoping we'll get to do that. Um, I'll let you know as it comes up. So we covered the uh, physical part of fitness. There's another area which often gets forgotten, which is the mental health side of things. Post COVID, I think COVID had a really bad effect on a lot of people. I think there's a lot of people who possibly don't even know they've got issues. Um, I never used to think of things like mental health. I considered myself to be pretty resilient, pretty thick skinned. Um, but it, it, even during COVID and after COVID, even I had to think, you know, this is what, what's going on here. Um, so I started doing meditation. I've really enjoyed it. If nothing else, you've put aside time to stop and just just be um, and and with gadgets my iphone i've got an apple watch i hate the bloody thing my son talked me into buying it he said oh it's life-changing yeah it is nags the tits off me all the time i hate it absolutely hate it You're just sitting there trying to do something or just being and this watch is buzzing away at me oh it's time to stand up bugger off watch i'll stand up when i'm ready I hate the thing anyway meditation God, I probably need to meditate now. I got right wound up about that watch. Um, meditation, I found, I've really enjoyed. I've followed a couple of people. I did an evening class in um, mindfulness. I enjoyed that, but there was some bird there who really cheesed me off. She, she thought she was a, a she, think, she thought she was some sort of coach, and she, she kept talking up. Oh, she got on my tits. Anyway, that's another story. I did get something from that. I got a really interesting thing, and that was mindfully eating chocolate now i love chocolate i've always said i love chocolate they gave us a chocolate bun and you put it in your mouth take as long as you can to eat it and i sat there and i was going i actually don't like chocolate in fact i hate chocolate it's claggy it's fatty it's greasy i suddenly discovered i didn't actually like chocolate and that was quite a shock to me really and that's when i thought this mindful thing could, could could have something here you know i was eating chocolate it was sugar it was the rush i was getting from the sugar um it was stuffing something in my face and thinking i'm enjoying it but actually when i really looked at it i didn't like it i didn't like the chocolate at all um so i did a bit of mindfulness um my beekeeping i always say is like meditating if you come up to the beehive and you're all stressed and you're you know you're all edgy and a bit sharp movement the bees pick up on it they also pick up on the carbon dioxide in your breath um, and they react the way that you approach them and i found that if i stand there and i just and i just relax and you know gather myself up and go up to the hive gently and just move slowly and if you watch these old beekeepers one of the reasons the old boys are good at beekeeping everything's very slow and fluid kids go up to them they get stung to bits because they're all jerky and excited the bees pick up on it so i've i've found that um beekeeping has actually been meditation for me because i have to just just calm just settle before i go up to the beehives it makes a world of difference to how the bees receive me and then there's another area which i think people forget which i a, a good friend of mine sorry he refers to himself as a colleague because he says i haven't got any friends you know that you know who you are um he says to me you spend half or a third of your life in your bed or in your bedroom don't skimp on it so buy that better mattress buy nice bedding have it comfortable um i've got air conditioning um because i hate those hot sweaty summer nights you know it's all humid um, so air conditioning make your bedroom that sanctuary because you're going to spend a third of your life or half your life there and uh, if you're lucky you'll get half your life in bed um and and it's important 
if you don't if you're not sleeping properly you're not performing during the day so that's another tip from the meditation or the mental health side i think is i'm a professional sleeper i might actually do something on that i can be asleep in 10 seconds i can literally say i need to go to sleep now boom i'm asleep and i'll sleep right through the night but that's a blessing well it's not a blessing actually it's something my dad taught me so maybe i'll do something on that but get a good night's sleep get enough sleep um, if you're sitting up on your phone all night or you're reading books through the night it's not a good sign So here's my top tip. This is the one we've waited to the end for. It's really so simple. Water, tons of water. I'll drink five or six of these during the day and another two or three in the evening. Um, it's just water. I like fizzy water. I think tap water is the dullest thing ever I've ever tasted. I like fizzy water and I like ice in it. Um, to me, that's as refreshing as any Coca-Cola now. When I first started drinking it, I didn't like it. And one night I sat there and I thought, God, this is lovely. This is so refreshing. And because you're not having the, the claggy sugar rush afterwards. Um, the first few weeks you do it, you spend your life on the loo. I mean, your body's not used to having that much water. I, I was probably going to the loo possibly 10 times a day. Um, when you first start, then after a, probably a week or two, starts to reduce um, as a keen scuba diver. One of the things we're told is if your wee has any color at all, then you're dehydrated. So that's what you're aiming for. Clear we. And I'm not going to go into too much detail there. You all know what it looks like. And when you look at the loo and it's got colour in it, you're, you're dehydrated. It's too late. You're already there. And so I found tons of water. It's It makes you feel fantastic. Um, as I say, first week or two, it's a bit of a shock to your body. You know, your body's not used to being hydrated. You've probably been in a bad way for quite some time, as I was, you know, years. Um, and the other thing I found is when you fill up with water, you don't get the urge to eat all that food. You haven't, you, you're full just from water and that's got no calories in it at all. So that's my top tip. I mean, water, water, water. If you get one of these big um, hydration bottles like you take to the gym, uh, I've never gone to the gym. I'm just pretending I know what a gym is. You know what I mean? These big, you know, water bottles with, say, two litres in it. Fill it to the top. And just keep emptying it just keep drinking it down through the day and it's not even a matter of tip down a whole liter in one go the trick is have a glass by your side and just keep on taking a sip make a world of difference honestly it will it will transform your life all these other things might give you a five ten percent improvement the water will give you 20 30 40 probably more percent improvement so there you go give those a try put in the comments what works for you and and whether you've uh, whether you've tried any and if they work for you and i hope you're feeling a lot better on it cheers <laughs>